everyone, it's Annie with Potter USA, and I'm just playing around in my studio on a Saturday afternoon, and I'm sure you've seen these pattern plates that we've started offering. We have a bunch of different patterns. We've been doing limited runs so far, but now that we've kind of figured out the best way to make them, um, we're just going to go crazy and make a bunch of different patterns. It's it's really exciting. So right now they're designed for use with a rolling mill. And I had to challenge myself to make it so that it could work with a press since I know most of you have presses and may or may not have a rolling mill. I don't have a rolling mill. So I wanted to show you how I have made it work. Now I can't guarantee that this will work with all of the pattern plates since I haven't tested each one individually, but this pattern plate in particular, I think it was called the Art Deco. I don't know if it's sold out. Um, I was able to make it work if I can get the camera to focus. Oops, let's see, hopefully that does it. Yeah, so just a few presses in the hydraulic press and I was able to get this really crisp, really clean texture. So I'll show you how I do that really quick and then you can play around and see what other patterns it works with. Before we get started, I want to talk about the metal that I used and the metal that I recommend that you use for this technique. So I've started with 20 gauge fully annealed fine silver. You want your metal to be completely annealed. You want it to be as close to butter as possible because when you put it in the press, you want it to as easily as possible be pressed into the design. I wouldn't recommend going any thinner than 20 gauge, especially if you're going to be using one of our pancake dies. Our pancake dies generally work best. We recommend about 20 gauge up to 16 gauge. A lot of times 22 gauge will also work, but no thinner than that, or else you'll get big burrs, your metal might get caught, etc, etc. So by starting with 20 gauge, kind of end up with areas here that are creeping up on 22 gauge, so it's thinned through the process. So make sure you start with thick enough metal, make sure it's annealed, and let's go. To use this pattern plate in the press, I'm using an electric press. You could use a manual press. I can't guarantee how easy it will be since I haven't tried it, um, but it does seem doable. So what you want to do is you want to use the uh, tool steel pusher and make sure it's centered in your press. Absolutely make sure that it's centered anytime you're using it, not just with this technique. And then you'll place the pattern plate beneath it. I'm sorry for the shaky camera work. My tripod is at work. So, um, so once you have your plate, the area of the plate that you want to use, centered underneath the pusher, you're going to place your metal on top of it and then the mighty mini urethane pieces. So these are 95 durometer and we're using them to use to do the play. Typically we use these with our impression dies to form the metal, um, but I've tried to use this plate with just the pusher alone, pushing the silver directly into the plate, didn't work as well as with the urethane. So what we're going to do is basically press once, lower the platen, move the urethane slightly, and then press again and continue to do that until the metal is fully patterned.
but you can start to see some of the lines from the pattern plate kind of impressed or I guess depressed on the back of the silver. So that shows you that the pattern is definitely going to be showing up on the other side. So I'm going to take this over to my bench where there's better lighting and I can stabilize the metal and I will show you the big reveal. Okay, so I wanted to do the big reveal on camera, but the piece fell off as I was walking back over here. So you'll just have to trust me that it came from this piece. So here's the plate that we used. And ta-da, here is the impression that I made using the press. Now, these plates are still going to work better in a rolling mill, but it's kind of exciting to see that I made it work in a hydraulic press if you don't have a rolling mill. So experiment in copper first, play around, make the mistakes in the more inexpensive metal before moving on to silver or gold, whatever you want to use, and play around. See what you come up with, and be sure to share pictures of what you make in our Facebook group, which is Potter People, and let me know if you have any questions. Happy creating, and I'll see you next time.